So we're going to do a guide on making a secondary account into a resource hyper farm. Having a hyper farm like this is much more efficient as a means of getting resources than gathering. As a level 5 gold mint, for example, only has 1.46 million gold in it and it will take hours to gather just one of them. Whereas a gold farm, you can easily make over 10 million gold a day just from doing nothing just from the initial time you put into leveling up the mints and getting the stats up. So for a hyper farm you can focus gold and then one other resource type if you're doing it as efficiently as possible. You can obviously spread out the different resource types but you want to just fixate on those two and then maximize the buffs for both of them. For gold there isn't really an option because these spaces you can only build mints, army tents, or hospitals on them. Whereas the other type, you have to pick between wood, iron, stone, or grain farms. So this all specifically is a gold and wood hyper farm, which means we want all mints and all lumber yards. Again, this slot can be whatever you want. It can be wood, it can be iron, it can be stone, it can be grain. It all depends what you want most on your main I guess or what you're lacking from your other farms so we're going to want to build these up as much as possible obviously this process can maybe be a bit slow on totally new accounts where you have no diamonds, no speed ups so you're going to want to do everything you can to maximize the income of those things so training grounds, alliance gifts, clicks from things like nobility uh, you can buy out speed ups in the VIP shop, these are very efficient in terms of diamonds to speed up ratio. And then as you're leveling these up you're going to want to simultaneously start increasing your stats for the resource uh, production percentage on all of them. And there's a few ways of doing this. So first of all you've got research, and that will be in the production tree with these four researchers. So it will be grain, stone, wood, and iron uh, production speed. And then in formations there will be gold production speed. And in commandership there will be increased um, capacity for all of them. So gold, stone, wood, iron, and grain. Obviously capacity lets you uh, produce more up to that point. It will stop producing when, once you hit capacity, so effectively the more capacity you have, the more resources you can produce. And then after that we have talents. You're obviously going to want to fully max out the production on the resource types you're, resource types you're creating. So here it is gold and wood. If you don't have all talent points available because you're a lower lord level, you want to ideally focus on the later stages because they go to the higher numbers. So if you can only get these last two to 50 and you have to leave everything else at lower amounts, that is fine. You obviously want, in the leveling process, construction research speed will be really important, probably more so. So don't overlook that. And then there's gear. All the research gear has gold dragons production on it. And this offhand as well. And for the, re the specific resource types, the builder's set has those production types in them. So you want to level accordingly. Gold is probably the most in demand resource. So sitting in research gear fully is probably the most ideal way to do it unless you're really at a loss for another resource type. And then we have these scrolls which you can buy for alliance coins. They'll increase production by 25%. Obviously it can be costly to keep this going especially if you're not in a active alliance with it, but less than 20k for 7 days 
I mean, it's doable. You, you can get that even if you're in an alliance by yourself, just from blitzing alliance trials, because that will give you a daily 40k, which is a pretty good way of doing it. After that, we have commanders. So each free to play commander tends to have a buff to production of a certain resource. So for grain, it is Sheila and Jean. For wood, it is Arslan and Arya. Um, gold is Rob, Feiss, and Sauron. Iron is Meryl, Robert, and Garel. And stone is Obain, Russell, and Barrett. So there's two old Westeros past commanders in there. So that's a bit more awkward to level, especially on new accounts, but it is doable. So you're gonna want to level up to gold the resource types you want to be buffing. So for me, as a golden wood farm in this account, it will be Sauron, Feist, and Rob for gold production, and Arslan and Arya for wood production. Obviously with Awakening, you can play in to that a bit for extra speed as well. It's like here I could start leveling Rob for the gold production buffs and that will start adding up as well. And that's about it realistically. You just want to maximize those production buffs as much as possible with all uh, max buildings. I mean, the, the biggest buffs you'll get will be from talents. Like, if you don't have these last talents at max, that is the, the bulk of your buffs that will be missing. I mean, it, when, you, well, when you're leveling them, and you're, like, doing construction research speed, and then you finally get to be able to make the switch to these talents, you'll see a huge spike in uh, the hourly production for both of them. But I would greatly advise everyone makes hyper farms if they're playing this game seriously, especially if you're active fighters and you're healing and retraining and training a lot of troops. Because it gets very, very costly and gathering by itself just won't be able to sustain you. And it's just too fiddly. It takes too much time. It ties you up too much. Like, if you have to react to an invader or something and you have to recall everything, it takes too much time, it will burn through too many march speed ups, returning everything and stuff like that. So hyper farming is definitely the best way to get resources in this game. And this is how you maximize its effectiveness.